In this tutorial, we will import geographic data, create and edit shapefiles, explore base maps and coordinate systems, and perform georeferencing. We will work towards a similar map as shown in the canvas. For now, let's create a blank map by starting a new project. Before we import our local data, we can create a base map, which is a built-in web map service in ArcGIS. This is like Google Maps, where the data is downloaded procedurally to your computer. However, we cannot edit this layer. Go to the icon Add Data, click on Add Base Map, and select one you desire. For this project, the terrain layer with labels is useful for detailed orientation. Now that we have a reference map, let's import analog maps from which we need to draw our own vector boundary. The map I have for this is not georeferenced, meaning that it's not positioned in the correct geographic location. If we would import our analog maps in the current state, it may end up somewhere in the ocean instead of South America. We first need to georeference the map by projecting the analog map to the correct geolocation. We can access this map from the catalog by clicking on connect folder. Set a path to your desired location and from the catalog, drag your file into the table of contents. It gives a warning message that it's not spatially referenced. This is what we have to perform prior to creating shapefiles based on the analog map. Open the georeferencing tool from the toolbar menu. Select the analog map you want to georeference. Then start looking for recognizable points on the base map. In the analog map, I see some locations we can search for on the base map. You can use the find function to search for futures in your dataset or find geolocations in the base map. In this case, we will look for Pokegron. Now that we located Pokegron, we can fit our analog map to the display to be able to be cross-referenced to our desired location. Disable auto-adjust and start picking a point on your analog map that you want to warp towards a geographic location. Click on a location in the analog map. Then click on the new location you want that point to go. Try to find similar locations on your analog map and the base map. Do this for at least three locations. Once finished, click Update Display. Double check if the results are satisfying. If not, try again or add more points. You can make the layer transparent by going to Properties, Display and Set Transparency. Once happy with the results, click on Update Geo-Referencing. 
The analog map is now geographically layered on top of your base map. We can uncheck the visibility of the base map to increase load speed of our map. Before we start to add our own content, we first need to define a coordinate system, which we will use to reference all our spatial data to. This is necessary to create uniform locations for all our data. The coordinate system can be geographic, meaning it represents the curvature of the Earth in a spherical shape. However, if one desires to perform spatial analysis on their data set, we should project our data. Projecting transforms the spherical shape of the Earth into a flat surface, which is unavoidable if one desires to produce flat maps. Projections come in many types. A famous projection is the Mercator projection, which was produced for allowing accurate directions for every location on the globe, allowing shippers to navigate correctly. However, it greatly distorts the land surfaces as Greenland looks as almost as big as Africa. For more accurate presentation of surface area, the mole data projection would be more sufficient. This, however, distorts the directions between locations, making navigation impossible. There's no perfect projection, and if you represent and analyze your spatial data, you need to consider the correct projection that suits your goals. For Suriname, I will use a universal transverse Mercator projection, which slices the Earth along the meridians in several zones, from the north to the south pole along the equator. Online, it's easy to find out which slides suit your location. In the case of Suriname, it is UTM Zone 21N. For detailed spatial analysis, you may want to use a local and more accurate projection if available. However, for this tutorial, the UTM projection should be sufficient. Now we can finally create our own content. Go to the catalog and right click on a folder. Hoover over new and create a shapefile. We will draw the boundary as a polygon. Select polygon, give it a name and select the proper coordinate system. In the case of Suriname, it is the UTM Zone 21N. You can add the desired coordinate system to your favorites for easy access later on. In the table of contents, a new layer is shown. Right click, go to properties and adjust the symbology to your desired style. You can always change it later. If happy with the symbology, right click the layer again, hover over edit features and click on start editing. In the upper left, a box opens with the edit tools. Click on the icon create features, which opens a panel on the right side of the screen where you can add features to your map. Click on your feature and hover over your canvas to insert the first vertex. Click on a new location to add a new vertex. Once happy with your shape, Double click to add the last vertex. Paths will be created in between the vertices. If unhappy about certain paths and vertices, you can reposition them easily. Remove them or add new vertices by opening the Edit Vertices menu. If everything looks decent, we can finish the sketch and save the edits.
Stop the editing to finalize your shapefile. This was it for this tutorial video. In the next video, you will create more shapefiles, explore the attribute table, add labels and define symbols.